On today's awesome episode of Let's Wine About It, I'm going to show you how to bottle a wine once it's all done. And that's what we're going to do with my white wine that I have oak aged. So it's very exciting. Now, I realize that with this project, you didn't get to see the beginning middle of my white wine uh, fermentation. But I wanted to use this as an opportunity to show you the uh, practice of bottling your wine, how to do that, um, what to expect. So this will be a short video filled with just as much humor as usual, but uh, it'll be interesting for you to see um, how that works. So uh, the basics of it is that you have to have um, your source vessel where the wine is coming from originally elevated right so this big jar here is what's going to elevate my carboys that currently have the wine in them and then you have to use a siphon to transfer the wine the reason we use a siphon and we don't just pour the wine into the bottles is because uh, doing so would expose it to oxygen and in almost all living things um, and organic material, there's what's called Alcetobacter. It's a bacteria that in the presence of oxygen and alcohol produces acetic acid. And acetic acid is the basis of vinegar. We don't want to make vinegar, right? We want wine. So because we now have alcohol, we can't introduce oxygen into that mix. And essentially all a siphon does is utilizes gravity because if the source is higher, gravity just pulls the liquid downward into your bottles and you don't have to keep pumping each time. So let's just do it, let's get at it. First bottle I'm gonna use is a Bullet Rye Frontier Whiskey bottle. Um, I love this bottle because it's really cool. And the other reason is that because I oak aged it, it took on like a slight bourbony, like rum flavor, which I think is kind of cool. It wasn't exactly what I was going for, but it definitely adds some complexity. So I thought, what better bottle than a bullet rye bottle, which I got from work because I'm a bartender. All right, here we go. Now, one of my only pieces of advice here is to make sure that you have enough bottles ready to go. You don't want to be caught in a situation where you underestimated how many bottles it would take to take up all the wine. And then you have your wine in your siphon and nowhere to go and it just pours out everywhere and it's, it's, it's honestly a disaster. You don't want that. So, I have lots of bottles. So it's not just a siphon that you need to buy that it like looks like this. You also want to get this thing I don't remember the name of it. It's gonna be in the description with a little link to Amazon where you can buy one. Uh, but the magic of this uh, tool is that when the little pin here is out, no liquid flows. When you press it down, it does flow. So it allows you a whole hell of a lot of control when you're going from bottle to bottle. So I recommend buying that. And we're off to the races. Oh, shit. Okay. Normally, I would put this all the way to the bottom, but I filled this so high that the further I push it, the wine is just going to flow right out, and I don't want that. So, we'll make two. You just give it a few good presses until it begins. So, oh, oh, it didn't start yet. Hold on. It's like magic. Only better, because it's science. And in an ideal situation, you don't have any air pockets throughout this, which could oxygenate your wine. And right now, it's, it's perfect. There's like none of that going on. So, The only thing I have to be weary about here is I gotta give it enough room to get the cork all the way in. And honestly, it's probably as much as I should push it. Ever since I was a kid, siphoning and like how that works has been so cool to me because I've never really understood it. I mean, you know, the basic concept is clear to me, gravity, whatever, 
but it's still like, how does this work? It's crazy. I don't know if it's just me. I'm kind of a dork. Boom. Once again, the only restriction when you're bottling is to leave enough room for the cork. And yeah, you do oxygenate it a little bit by doing what I'm doing right now. But again, oxygen in teeny tiny amounts, you're gonna be fine. Don't even worry about it. I just did that to put more of the wine like over the entrance to the siphon, add some pressure, makes it go a little faster, and make sure I get as much wine as I can. You can't get 100%, but you can get like 98. Now, I'm not gonna get a full bottle with what's left in here, but I have two carboys, so I'm just gonna pour that into here and then move on to other bottles. All right, and that's it. That's all we're gonna get. Once it starts bubbling and you get a bunch of air, you're done. And then you gotta just finesse it so you can get whatever wine is left in the tubing into the bottle. Bada bing. Bada boom. We gotta be careful here because I don't wanna put all the oxygen into this bottle because it'll have to come out. I know what to do. We're gonna start with a different bottle and then go to that one. Genius. These bigger bottles that I have here, these are uh, one liter Tito's vodka bottles, which I once again get at work uh, when they Use it all up, I just take them home at the end of the shift. And these little bottles here are just like one serving wine bottles, which I, I like to keep. I like to have a few of them for every single brew that I make because then I can, you know, try it at three months, at six months, see how the wine changes as it ages without having to commit to opening a whole bottle or like to give to people if they want to sample a bunch of different ones. Now I've literally just committed the sin I told you not to commit, which was I don't have enough bottles to finish this, so um, just give me a sec. Wow, this, <laughs> oh man. Well, you know, do as I say, not as I do. And you're seeing now why you need to have enough bottles. It's just, gets really messy really fast and you could waste a lot of wine if you don't have enough bottles to begin with. But we're fine, it's fine. Let's finish now. See, it's like magic. I went away for like 10 minutes and it still does the thing. Yeah. If there's any justice in the universe, this will fill one exactly. Or I'll have a little extra. That's fine too. Now, the other key to uh, bottling correctly is um, if you don't first transfer, say, what's in here, into a secondary vessel and then bottle from that second one, you're gonna have a little bit of sediment at the bottom just from it sitting around for the, uh, however long it's been in there. You don't wanna get that sediment into your bottles because that's gross. They're like wispies um, and it just doesn't look good. So you have to be careful. You have to leave it probably about half an inch every time. It's gonna go to waste, but you don't wanna get that gunk into your bottle. So I was starting to see a few wispies get in there, so I just stopped it, called it. And this isn't, obviously this is not, Full, there's a lot of oxygen in here. What you do with something like this is you drink it. You you drink it today if you can. Um, cork it, put it in the refrigerator. Maybe it'll last a little bit longer, but it won't save that long. Um, oxygen really does ruin wine. Not only like turning it into alcohol, but it strips the flavors within a day. So if you've ever had like a bottle of wine and it's really good, and then the next day you finish the bottle of wine, it tastes a lot less complex, has a lot less flavors, and that's that's because of air, because of oxygen. And there you go, that's how you bottle. Uh, this I think was an interesting video just to show you like the final step, even though you haven't seen the middle steps of like what you do to make wine. But um, I hope it was worthwhile for you and I appreciate you watching. So thank you. Like and subscribe as usual. Bye-bye.